Good day and welcome to John Shipton, the father of Julian Assange. And we are going to make you make come a little bit closer so we see you better. Yes, and um, we are starting in English. Et ce sera traduit en français pour nos euh, habitués de Michel Midi ce soir sur YouTube, un peu plus tard, ça va prendre du temps, mais ce sera traduit sur YouTube, donc malheureusement aujourd'hui, il est nécessaire de comprendre l'anglais pour suivre l'entretien en direct. So, uh, John, you were just now uh, speaking with uh, Julian on the phone. How was he? Uh, 23 hours a day. Uh in uh, their in their cells because of uh, COVID-19 lockdown. So uh, he's happy to speak to me, but the, the limitation of uh, of life is severe. Yes. Uh, when was the last time that you saw him directly? Uh, uh, when when uh, COVID uh, started, uh, the the jails were all locked, so it's uh, over three months now. Early three months. Yeah. And how was he at that time? Yeah. Well, he's uh, pleased to see us. Uh, uh, he doesn't uh, he doesn't complain. He just asks uh, me to. Mostly, we speak about uh, gossip. Actually, family, friends, mothers of children, and children, and then a little bit about. Uh, what I can do, you know, go, go to France and so on, you know, um, go to Paris and speak. And so, yeah. Many doctors and psychologists have called for an end to what they call Julian's psychological torture and medical neglect. Is there a danger for him in the cell? Absolutely, yes, that's clear danger. He has a lung infection at the moment which we uh, have written uh, to the the prison governor appealing to, we've asked for a blood test for this lung infection. Um, so uh, we push for that mm -hmm. at the moment. But uh, it's severe, 10 years of stress, and now uh, over a year of solitary confinement is, you know, very damaging. And what is the attitude of the Belmarsh authorities? Well, they mostly the authorities and the prison workers all are concerned about themselves getting COVID because the close quarters in a prison are an ideal circumstance for people to get ill. Yes. So that's yes, the and situation. the lawyers, the lawyers I, of Julian, have proposed a bail request uh, because of the pandemic, and uh, it was refused by the authorities. Yes, uh, the judge refused the bail application, and uh, I agitate for another bail application to the High Court. This uh, must not continue any more prisoners uh, under threat of death who are actually remand prisoners. So this is a bad yes, situation. There, there was a Very tweet bad. of uh, Wikileaks. What's the next step for the defense? Are they try, trying to get him free? Yes, a further bail application to the High Court. But I don't know when that will be. Uh, I hope soon. Um, surely the authorities uh, will begin to see the injustice of the situation and the constant uh, oppression of yes. Julian. The oppression which is, is a clear threat to his well-being and health and Yes, I, as a father, I can imagine how you feel when they are threatening your son like that. We have received a message from Jose Manuel. Welcome to our special guest, John Shipton. Thoughts for your, to your son. Um, oh, thank you. Yes. Um, 
interesting. What is your impression about the hearings? Do you think it's a show trial? And what happened during these hearings? Well, that's interesting. Uh, you know, from my perspective, it's a fraud upon the court. The prosecution uh, was described by the barrister Mark Summers as lies, lies, and more lies, and then demonstrated that the prosecution just lied and lied, demonstrated clearly. So it, we believe that it's a fraud upon the court and it's a continuing persecution. Just uh, as an example, Fergie, uh, Prince Andrew's uh, ex-wife, was charged with uh, uh, espionage by Turkey and an extradition order was mounted, which was dismissed straight away. So one treatment for one and a different treatment from the other. This is not mm. justice. The great gift of the English speaking peoples was to place a law between the state and the people so that the, the state had to relate to the people through law. Well, in Julian's case, this has been abandoned. Very distressing. Yes. Uh, under the US Espionage Act, uh, Julian risks to be sentenced to 175 years of prison. What are the arguments of the USA to extradite him? Well, <laughs> they, they say that uh, under the 1917 Espionage Act, that Julian, in publishing or in receiving and publishing, these leaks committed an act of espionage. This is absurd. The publishers, the first to publish, were Der Spiegel, Le Monde, and the New York Times and Guardian. They were the first to publish. WikiLeaks published a day later, mostly because of a, a glitch in the website. So... Uh, no, you don't see any of those editors charged with anything. You know, they are at home having a glass of wine with their family and Julian is locked up. You don't see any of the people who committed the crimes that we can see in collateral murder yes. video. They are at home with their families and Julian's locked up. Yes, the criminals are free It's and... Terrible. The whistleblower is in prison. Yes. Yes. Uh, so yes. against this trial, you have been in Westminster. I will show to our people uh, a few images and then we talk again. You have been in about the, the case. Can you make some clarity about the sex allegations case? Because this is what has been uh, presented to the public opinion There is a sexual accusation, so he must uh, compare injustice. Can you tell us what this? Well, uh, the, you know, the Swedish prosecutor conspired with the Crown Prosecuting Service to extend and to not bring the case to charges. So there are documents extracted from the Swedish Prosecuting Authority, which document this conspiracy between them. The charges were never laid. There were simply allegations. Nine years, the, the allegations dropped four times, four prosecutors. It's just a scandal which has brought Swedish Justice Administration to ruin. Everybody in Europe now knows that you cannot get fair and just treatment in Sweden. What you can get in Sweden is junk furniture from IKEA, but you can't get justice. Yes. Uh, there is another trial 
in Spain against a Spanish security firm called UC Global, and the owner is David Morales. What is this trial about? Well, you know, in 2017, at the end, and 2018, progressively, this, the David Morales and his employees, on behalf of the CIA and Adelson, Sheldon Adelson was his employee, David Morales' employee, installed microphones and high definition cameras in the embassy. So spying on everything that Julian did, everything. Even they had uh, microphones in the ladies' toilet because Julian and the lawyers thought that the only place in the embassy where you have a private conversation would be in the ladies' toilet. But no, uh, they had microphones there. This is just a crime. The, uh, extending the crime to the fact that uh, Julian, in conference with his lawyers, was recorded and videoed. These are available on the net. You can look at them now. And normally, in that circumstance, with that amount of corruption, the trial, the hearing, would be dropped. The extradition hearing would yes. be dropped. It's this is the kind of thing that makes a smeared. trial illegal, actually. Yes, yes. It, it would normally be just gone. It would be over now and people would be in court being sued for recompense, for compensation, normally. But in Julian's case, it seems to have to continue. We will see in... September, the full revelations of the surveillance of Julian and the videos. But we can see those already. If you go to the Grey Zone and Max Blumenthal, you can see the videos of Julian in conference with his lawyers being videoed. Yes, seen. Grey Zone is a very interesting US website with a lot of good documents. You spoke about Adelson. That is the billionaire owners of many casino in Las Vegas and also a big support of Trump and of Israel, isn't it? Yes, yes, he owns um, uh, casinos in Macau, in China, and in mm. Las Vegas. He's extremely wealthy. He employed uh, David Morales uh, as a security on his yacht which uh, sometimes comes to the Mediterranean. But, of course, uh, Morales was never on the yacht. He already had 12 security officers looking after the So yacht. the CIA is uh, spying Julian since 2017 when Moreno came to yes. power, or did they spy already before that? No, when Moreno came to power. That they already, uh, um, Morales was looking for, uh, looking for people to give him money to spy on Julian. In Las Vegas, he went uh, to a show there and, and uh, put up his sign saying, you know, I look after the, the embassy. Of course, he was uh, fishing. And he caught a fish, a big fish, as it turned out, a shark. Yes, uh, the CIA. Uh, um, documentary movie should be made with all these uh, corruption and uh, manipulations. Now, uh, Julian was living uh, for a long time in the embassy of Ecuador in London, and he was forced uh, to leave by the British police very brutally in April last year. What happened to his belongings, his personal affairs? The, the, um, the, they were confiscated by the Ecuadorian government and handed to the United States. Uh, the, some were given back, just 
uh, money and a few items like an exercise machine, but all of Julian's files and telephones were given to the United so States. So, they are thieves. They are Again, thieves. This is the, the, the criminality, you know, like it's hysterical. It's, um, everything they could possibly think of was threatened. They even um, thought of kidnapping Julian from the the embassy. You know, they found uh, uh, pistols in David Morales' home with the the serial numbers filed off. They attempted to get uh, the DNA from the children's nappies. You know, the, there's nothing these people found sacred or beyond, or, you know, they just, uh, if it was criminal, they would be delighted to do it. If it was not criminal, they'd say, no, I don't want to. Um, so, um, uh, WikiLeaks and... Um, um, uh, the main, uh, daily papers you have mentioned, Le Monde, uh, The Guardian, El País, and another one yes. have been working yes. with WikiLeaks and the Spiegel have been working with uh, WikiLeaks. Mm. Uh, how do you explain that? What was the strategy? Oh, I don't know the strategy. You know, I'm not. Uh, you know, I'm not in the know about Julian's strategy uh, at that time. But uh, the doctrine of WikiLeaks is to protect sources. And if you give us something to leak, to do our utmost to bring it to as much public attention as possible, which they do successfully, you know, their, their record is second to none. So we can say that uh, with the cables and with the Iraq war and the Afghan war files, as many people as possible got to know. And the collateral uh, murder video, as many people as possible were given the knowledge as to how the United States and its allies go about doing things mm -hmm. in the world. As a... As for a personal reflection, as a journalist uh, in independent media, I think the strategy of using uh, Le Monde and El País and uh, Der Spiegel and that kind of uh, mainstream medias um, was a problem because they published very little actually not the very important things. In my opinion, they used Julian for their own interests. But when the big confrontation came, they demonized him and they betrayed him. While actually Julian is fighting for the freedom of the press and freedom of information. So I think in the future, it would be important to count not on the mainstream media who have been uh, repeating all the media lies about every war, Iraq, Yugoslavia, Libya, and so on, and uh, to count more on independent small medias all over the world, because the message of WikiLeaks is very, very important, and it's not enough, I think, forwarded to the public opinion. And uh, I have here in... Brussels, we have a very active committee. I will show a few seconds and then we come back. Uh, photos about actions for Julian in the uh, Rue de la Presse. Um, how do, what do you consider about the press freedom in Europe? Well, uh, we look, uh, you know, in touring around Europe, I, I find two things. One, is that all of the, with the exception of the New York Times, all of the publications that published for WikiLeaks were European. European journalists, European publishers, European publications, and European staff on WikiLeaks. 
So any oppression of Julian reflects and intimidates the publishers and publications and journalists of Europe. No journalist, if Julian gets sent to the United States, no European journalist or publication or publisher will ever consider publishing substantial news. You'll just get extradited to the United States and thrown into a, a dungeon from which you can't expect to return. We all know, uh, particularly from the last two weeks activity, the flaws, the deep and profound flaws in the administration of law and justice in the United mm -hmm. States. So any extradition to the United States of a journalist who's making substantial criticism or investigative journalism will be a disaster for them. So Europeans, for their own self-interest, must fight tooth and nail to prevent this extradition for their own self-interest. Mm -hmm. uh Yes, aspect. you have been in front of the European Parliament. I will show two, three photos for that. You have been going to the European Parliament to ask that they move. I'll show the photos now. Yes, we saw you with a uh, young colleague, Federica, and in your hands a book, which uh, may be not too bad. Um, the USA uh, says that uh, Julian have put in danger the life of his sources. What is the defense strategy on this? Oh, this is absurd. The, you, you see, those men and women administering, administering the destruction of Iraq, Yemen, Syria, Libya, the destruction of those countries, the murder of millions mm -hmm. of people, the displacement of millions of people, they get up and say, Julian endangered lives. This is beyond grotesque. There's no capacity in language to put the two ideas together of these ghouls who administer the destruction of country after the country saying that Julian endangered lives. Well, let me tell you, under oath, under oath, officers of the United States Army have declared that there were no lives endangered. It's just a publicity mm -hmm. stunt to turn our attention away from these monstrous crimes that Julian brought to our notice monstrous crimes. Do you believe there is a legal solution in this case or is it only possible with political pressure? Well, it's clear to us that it's a political case. It's not a legal case. If the legalities had been obeyed, Julian wouldn't have been one minute in an embassy. It would have been over 10 years ago. The fabrications of the evidence in the Swedish case and the extradition order. So two judges in the Supreme Court in the United Kingdom said that Julian should not be extradited. Mm. Two other judges Julian should be extradited. Lord Phillips, the presiding judge making the decision, used the French interpretation of the European arrest warrant system rather than the English interpretation which Parliament had thought upon and passed. This is absurd. Just goes on and on. All one really asks of the United Kingdom and the in Sweden was to obey their own laws, stop breaking laws yeah. in order to further a political persecution of Julian Assange. Mm -hmm. That's all. 
obey their own laws. Yeah. In relation with this, we have a question by José Manuel. Would it be relevant to pursue the British state in front of the European Court of Human Rights for torture and mistreatment, since this is possible in France and in Belgium? Yes, that would be good, but uh, I think I'm not. Yeah, I think that all the local avenues must be fully explored first before the ECHR mm. can take up the case. So it must be uh, go to the High Court in the United Kingdom and then the Supreme Court and then to the European yes, Court. Yes, step by step. Rights. Now, about political yes. support and asylum. Uh, the French lawyers of Chileans have demanded to the French government to grant him political asylum. The city of Geneva has called the government of Switzerland to provide asylum. In Belgium, the Workers' Party, PTB, called out or the government to do the same. Do you think Europe could eventually grant asylum to Chilean? I hope so. Uh, that is my hope. Um, you, also, you know, the... the uh, PACE, the uh, uh, PACE, uh, the Parliamentary Assembly, uh, have uh, declared that, you know, Julian ought not to be extradited and be freed. Also, the uh, European Human Rights Commissioner has called upon the, uh, that the uh, Julian be freed and the extradition or not go ahead. Similarly, uh, the European Journalists' Union uh, mm -hmm. Reporters Without Borders, um, and the Austrian government has uh, seconded the uh, European Human Rights uh, Commissioner's uh, request that Julian be freed. The Human Rights Commissioner, uh, the United Nations Human Rights Commissioner, has also said that prisoners ought not to be endangered, particularly innocent remand prisoners, by being locked up in this time of COVID-19. I can go on. There are many, many, yes. many people around the world and many institutions call for Julian's freedom. I expect that the uh, United Kingdom will hear our voices and make the proper decision. Uh, what do you expect from the Australian government? Uh, uh, at the uh, Australian parliamentarians have been very good and and supportive. There's a cross-party committee. Uh, so far, the Australian uh, government has de constantly uttered the refrain of due process. Due process will be followed. Well, we all know, and we can all see the evidence in Nils Melzer's uh, report, the Nils Melzer, the United Nations Rapporteur on Torture. We can read in his report that due process has never been followed. So I wait for the Australian government to read that report and then act diplomatically to make representation to the United Kingdom to free their citizen, Julian Assange, from this persecution. I wait upon that. Some uh, people here in Europe uh, believe that Trump is an outsider opposed to the deep state. And do you see any difference between uh, Trump and any other US presidents about war and about freedom of expression? No, I don't. Uh, I, <clears throat> you know, they, a president is just one man. Uh, unless he comes into the presidency on riding upon a movement and has at his command personalities able to institute his policies, it will just continue as it is. The institutions of state have the power, the Pentagon, the CIA, the uh, military-industrial uh, 
complex, and so on. That is where the power lays. It would need, I cannot see, you know, the United States continuing in its present form beyond Christmas. You know, they will make changes. They will need to make changes because the population is restive. You know, the population are, are going to insist that changes be yes. made. Yes, so but uh, the candidate Bernie Sanders has been sabotaged by his own party. Do you think we can place more hope in Joe Biden? No, you know, I repeat, forgive me for repeating myself. One man cannot make those changes. He needs institutional support. He needs the support of a movement. He needs to be able to grasp personalities of competency and ask them to assist him to institute change. It is not Bernie Sanders, one man. This is a hope of ours that we select one man and the change will come. But it's not how it happens. It just simply comes from us. It's an upwelling amongst the people to demand from government reform and yes. change. And I see that in the United States. I see that in France with the Gilets Jaunes. Um, I see that uh, with the support that is given to Julian right throughout Europe, that there is an upwelling change. It was visible before COVID. After COVID, I don't know. But it, before COVID, we could all witness the change throughout Europe as one institution after the other said Assange must be freed. Now, after COVID, well, we will see. Yes, so you uh, call to the people, not the institutions, to get justice. Now, you have all over the world hundreds of people who are fighting for the liberation of Julian. Is Julian fully aware of all this support in the world? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, this is, uh, whenever we speak, uh, uh, I, I uh, mention, you know, that the love and support of many people throughout the world continue to work and continue to act in, to ensure that we that Julian is freed and that we continue to be able to read and discuss amongst each other facts that are important to us. This is just vital. Yeah. You cannot make decisions without being uh, without being able to get access to good information. And this is what Julian is the icon of at the moment. And of course, the icon of persecution as well. Yes. I will show now a few images of the actions of the committee in Brussels. I uh, thank them for oh. helping me to prepare this uh, Michel Midi. And um, the sculpture of it, uh, Davide Dormino were presented in Brussels Uh, to support Julian Assange. So we had a lot of demonstrations in uh, Brussels for Julian. I thank uh, Marie-France and all the friends of this committee. I will show the address if you are interested in joining the solidarity and write making questions of suggestion. I'm showing now the address of the committee that you can note. And now I will uh, explain uh, that next uh, uh, Thursday, we have uh, Rafael Correa, the ex-president of Ecuador, who will be uh, with us about the coronavirus to explain how some countries are doing well and some very bad. Donc, je disais euh, qu'on aura jeudi prochain à midi Raphaël Correa en français pour une interview sur le bilan 
de l'Amérique latine, des pays qui font très très bien et on n'en parle pas, des pays qui font très mal et euh, on va en parler. So, uh, as a conclusion, John, and uh, I would like to uh, grant you that MVC Action, all our team and all our friends and our network will be on the side with Julian until his liberation and I hope that we can get you in Brussels, but in the good side of Brussels, one day to have a drink here in the garden in the better times and thank you both for what you have done, for the freedom of all information, for the all right to know. So would you like to deliver now a final message to the people who are uh, listening to us now? Yes, I, I'd just like to thank all my uh, French friends and, and uh, Belgian friends. They've been very, very good to me and they've uh, I just, uh, before coming to speak to you, I had just finished speaking to Jean-Paul uh, Redette and Genevieve and Monique, uh, and uh, I hope to continue to do so. Yeah, they're wonderful, wonderful people. What to do? Very well. Uh, John, uh, thank you very much. We stay in the fight with you. Et euh, que tous nos amis de Michel Midi continuent à suivre la bataille pour l'information et pour la solidarité. À jeudi prochain, donc, avec Raphaël Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you, Michel.